Brian Josephson's invention, which regulates electric currents in complex machines, played a pivotal role in the development of electronics and quantum computing. This achievement later earned him the Nobel Prize. He also became interested in the mind-body problem and is one of the few scientists to argue that parapsychological phenomena, telepathy, psychokinesis, and other paranormal themes may be real. This led to the exploration of superconductivity and Josephson junctions in nature, particularly in human bodies, where features resembling Josephson junctions have been later identified. Now, to explain them, we should look into superconductivity first. Electrical conduction occurs when electricity flows along a wire. When it flows through a material with no resistance, it's called superconductivity. This phenomenon cannot occur without the principles of quantum mechanics and is also one of the rare occurrences where quantum effects are visible on a macroscopic level. Now, initially, it was believed that superconductivity only occurred at extremely low temperatures, but later it was discovered that it can occur at higher temperatures and even in the human body. In a superconducting state, current can flow without any resistance, creating an electric version of a perpetual motion machine. This means that if the current flows in a coil under suitable conditions, it can continue to circulate forever without needing to be recharged. Interesting effect arises when a supercurrent could jump over an insulating barrier connecting two superconductors using quantum tunneling into a system. This was a groundbreaking discovery, as it allowed the flow of current to be modified by adjusting the insulating barrier. If electricity flows too strongly, it can overload electronic devices and cause damage. And if it cannot flow at all through an insulator, it won't help either. Josephson junctions made it possible to use superconducting electricity of semi-strength that could be fine-tuned, and this makes our most advanced electronic devices possible. Albert St. Georgi and Freeman Cope, among others, have shown that the human body has organic semiconductors. These semiconductors can act as the necessary barriers for the Josephson junction to occur in our bodies. The proximity effect can trigger the jump between two superconducting currents that are close enough to each other and can influence each other, leading to a Josephson effect when an organic semiconductor is present. Now, to grasp the significance of these discoveries, we must examine the work of biochemist Freeman Cope, who found evidence suggesting that some nerve functions are controlled by superconduction. Cope believed that the ability of organisms to sense weak magnetic fields can be explained only by a biological superconductive Josephson junction. Moreover, he published this paper discussing how Josephson junctions enable organisms to detect not only weak magnetic fields, but also microwaves. His research remains classified, and Cope's full paper has never been published. His further work related to bioplasma led to even more surprising discoveries. In this paper, he reported that not only every human being contains a superconductive plasma, but also, quote, experimental evidence suggests that all objects, and especially living objects, contain and are surrounded by diffuse clouds of matter energy, probably best considered as a superconductive plasma state, end of quote. He explained that according to Einstein's special theory of relativity, it would be impossible for an outside observer to measure most physical parameters inside that plasma system. But even though it's impossible to measure what is happening inside these clouds, we can see what effects they have on things outside of them. High voltages like in Kirlian photography can help us see these effects. Cope explains that when superconducting plasma is around, it makes neighboring molecules less likely to absorb or emit light. This helps energize a group of molecules more easily. This plasma can also help make laser and maser-like actions from these molecules, which we can use to find out if the plasma is there. The evidence of solar terrestrial links suggests that diffuse superconductive plasma may reach the Earth as radiation from extraterrestrial sources, especially from the Sun. 
Cope proposed that such superconductive plasmas scattered inside living and non-living things. These plasmas could also get trapped inside materials, because once inside, they require a certain amount of energy to be removed. This also reminds a lot of the properties of exotic vacuum objects. Special collective plasma states that once produced also stay in the materials, particularly metals, indefinitely, and need extra energy supplied to be removed, as described by Ken Shoulder's experimental work. In living matter, a superconductive plasma results in the light emitted in a very narrow band of frequencies that is characteristic of coherent light similar to laser, and this can be observed experimentally. And in fact, such coherent laser-like light was reported in the works of Fritz Albert Popp and his team. Primarily the abnormally high laser-like coherence and the so-called squeezed light. What does all of this mean for our discussion in this video? It is fundamental. As suggested by Cope's research, the superconductive plasma inside our bodies interacts with our physical selves, as well as with universal electromagnetic fields and possibly microwaves. Essentially, Cope found that our bodies have a plasma-based interface that can be influenced by these fields. Later, there was a surprising addition to this topic from Europe. A team of five researchers who were well known for their work on biophotons published a paper that independently confirmed superconductivity in living things. Specifically, they focused on the presence of Josephson junctions in biological systems. The authors were interested in understanding what it meant for an organism's elementary components to exhibit associate behavior that results in long-range order. Quote, One of the authors and his co-workers have, over many years, found evidence that Josephson-like phenomena are occurring in living systems. The first piece of evidence came in 1975, that there is a small superconductive region a dispersion of such regions could give rise to an alternating current Josephson effect. A pair of nearby cells acts as a Josephson junction, which gives rise to an intercellular coherence. End of quote. In other words, the interactions between neighboring cells through Josephson junctions arrays create a state of organized complexity within organisms. Therefore, it's crucial to rebuild the foundation of biology by incorporating computer and information-based approaches, just as Michael Levin and his team at Tufts University are doing in their investigations of bioelectricity. Their experimental results are mind-boggling. 